The perimeter with Adam Morrison is proudly presented by Owens Farms Piedmontese. Let me share a local Spokane secret that everyone needs to know about. Owens Farms Piedmontese beef. Trust me when I say this. You cannot beat this meat. It's tender. It's flavorful. It's some of the best beef you'll ever put into your mouth, period. And to top it off, when you eat it, you can say goodbye to the meat hangovers. That's because Piedmontese beef is lean and has much less cholesterol than your typical supermarket beef. It's a new year. It's time to start living your life with no regrets. Go to OFP.farm to reserve your half or whole order of premium Piedmontese beef today. Go to OFP.farm. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is produced independently and locally in Spokane, Washington by Spokast Studios. Our city, our stories. Visit www.spokast.com to learn more about how you can start your very own podcast today. Do you love beer and helping support our local community? then you need to check out Golden Handle Brewing. It's Spokane's first social purpose brewery dedicated to brewing delicious beer and supporting the people and organizations that make Spokane a better place. Lots of places donate a little bit of their revenue to community organizations, and that's a great thing. But at Golden Handle, we do it every single day. Each month, we pick a different community nonprofit and then donate $1 of every Golden Handle pint we sell for the entire month to that cause. Then the next month, we do it all again. So cheers to the Bulldogs and cheers to a more resilient community. Mention that the perimeter with Adam Morrison sent you and get a free perimeter sticker when you order any Golden Handle beer. Visit us at the Old Steel Barrel Taproom on the west end of downtown Spokane at 154 South Madison Street, Thursday through Monday, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. The perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you in sponsorship with Delicious Hamburgers. Did you know delicious hamburgers and fries are the freshest in Spokane? Their hamburgers are never frozen, and that's because it tastes better. There's not even a freezer in the restaurant. Their fries are always made to order and never set under a heat lamp. It's differences like this you can truly taste. Next time you're craving the freshest hamburgers and fries, head to the corner of Augusta and Division and ask for the perimeter combo. A triple delicious hamburger with grilled onions, pickles, and special sauce. It also comes with fries and your choice of a milkshake. Delicious. Taste the difference. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Turn up the tent. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Welcome to season two of the Perimeter, week 19. I'm joined by Brennan, the producer. Gonzaga basketball, eight straight Sweet 16s. We're going to recap that and talk about the matchup with UCLA and Vegas coming up on Thursday. Um, crazy uh, week of basketball in general. Fun games for Gonzaga. Um, I thought that Grand Canyon was a good first-round matchup. Obviously, they had a great season, but it was a team that was finished fourth in the WAC and um, you know was a mid-major, quote-unquote. So I, I think... You know, when you whenever you can get a higher seed, and you can play a team like that. Obviously, you, you have the advantage. Obviously, they're a team that's um, coming in extremely hot. We're shooting it really well in their conference tournament. Um, but uh, I thought when I first saw that matchup and we started watching film, I thought it was um, you know uh, adva- advantageous a- advantageous um, to how we play. Um, didn't really have an inside presence defensively. Like I said, they shot the ball really well in their conference tournament, but we knew if we could take away uh, the three-point shooting, um, it would be you know something that would uh, you know allow us to get out and run. Started the game off really well, ten to two. Um, you know, looked really good, solid. Um, ball was going in, ball was crisp. Um, and then credit to them, they they went on a 10-0 run and got it up to twelve to ten. And then there was probably like a three-minute. Two and a half, three minute lull where both teams didn't score, and it was kind of um, teams didn't look nervous, but the ball just wasn't bouncing their way, and you know not being crisp. Um, <clears throat> you know, so the first half kind of just goes along, and you know when you play a, a as a three seed playing a fourteen and fifteen two, whatever it may be, everybody saw that you know the upsets with Arizona getting beat, obviously the Fairleigh Dickinson beating Purdue, and then Furman beating um, 
Virginia is the longer you go without playing well, the more the crowd will start turning on you mm. in those, these arenas, you know, yeah. they, they cheer for the underdog and stuff like that. And then the more like that creeps into people's heads, mm -hmm. right, we could lose this game. So that probably six minute, six and a half minute stretch uh, in the first half where they ended up taking a seven point lead, um, you know, was, you could feel the, the the energy in the gym kind of shift. And, and obviously, you know, if you're a Creighton fan who's watching the game and it was TCU fan watching the game, Baylor, but whoever is watching the game was starting to cheer for Grand Canyon, right? Because you, you're mm. trying to think of ahead of uh, who you're going to play, now, Arizona State especially, like the people out on our side. Um, but you're starting to think, well, okay, if we win, um, you know, we want to play the lower seed, obviously. <clears throat> So there was a stretch there where they, like I said, they get up seven and about five and a half minute mark. Um, I think the key to the game, it sounds funny, but there was a uh, tip in by Drew Timmy on a, on a putback dunk, which he's not a great leaper and he knows that, but like a, a nice tip slam uh, 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 in transition. And I think it got us within three at that point and it kind of got everybody else going. And then we um, went on a 16-0 run going into the end of the first half all the way into the second and, and during that time we went seven from nine from the field and started really um you know moving the ball offensively and that's when everything was going our way julian strother was fantastic at 16 points in the first half 28 overall was really rolling offensively um knocking down shots i, I liked how he was coming off you know our wide pin down action and dribble handoff action and getting to the paint he's starting to make that 12 foot 14 foot runner um, he started, um, he's been making that for the last six weeks is basically what I'm trying to say. So mm. it was really good. And, uh, you know, Drew, Drew played a, a, you know, a solid game as well with uh 21, eight to 13 from the field. And then, like I said, Julian nine to 15, three to six from downtown, 28 points. And then Ant Anton had a, a fantastic game, six to nine, two to three from downtown, 11 rebounds, 14 points. You know, he's been really unsung hero type of deal for us the last, you know, I, pretty much the whole year. I don't think there's been a stretch where he hasn't played well. Um, not just it's not just scoring, but it's like rebound, defending, being in the right spots, making the right plays. I don't think there's a like. I keep thinking like I don't really remember a stretch where he has done that all season. So, um, you know, it was a it was a cruise control after that 16-0 run. We get you know 12 point. Um, 12 to 14 point lead throughout the second half and kind of it was nice because there was never a, a moment of anxiety and never mm -hmm. creeped in yeah and like i said that whole week you know that first thursday and then even that friday there was games where you know those higher seeds were getting um you know having real success against the the ones twos and threes and and you never want that to creep in because it really does change at a building i don't know if some of the listeners probably have been to some games and some haven't um you start rooting for the the underdog really quick officials start going that way naturally you know what i'm saying just a yeah. little bit they like to make those big time calls where the crowd changes so mm. that was really i think a, a great positive to that game obviously the win but we never had point where i felt like grand canyon was truly in the basketball game mm -hmm. in the second half and so we just like i said kind of cruise controlled still played well but cruise controlled the rest of the way i thought defensively we did a really good job on um uh, you know all their guys they only shot 43 percent they were 9 to 24 37 which is not terrible from three but the um the last three games that they played they were they had 39 made three so obviously you know 13 a game yeah so that's yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a big emphasis in the you know the, the pregame and the scouts run these guys off the line make sure your rotations are good um you know make them take tough contested twos instead of threes and we did that and like i said we we started rolling offensively in the second half we ended up shooting 30 of 56 for 53 percent then 7 of 15 from downtown so 46 was great there then made free throws 15 to 19 and you know got to our you know about where our number is offensively 82 points scored and i was really impressed with that you know the, the actions that they ran i think uh, bryce drew's a very good coach scott drew's brother he also played at valpo for his dad and everybody remembers that valpo play we still call it valpo it's that uh throw deep to your big and then two guys peel off and he hit that crazy three in like 99 or 2000 and, and you know it's like a play that's ever 
forever called Valpo. Mm. Um, but they run really good action. So that was coming into that game, watching the tapes like, well, we have to be on um, defensively and make sure that we're talking through all of our switches and, and, you know, different ball screens and stuff like that. Guys obviously did that, but it was like, well, this, this guy obviously can coach, but it's like, he runs really good stuff. So um, good season for them. It's, it's, it's cool when, you know, teams can make runs and they go on the conference tournament runs and, and get in. But uh, like I said, it was nice to have, no anxiety in the <laughs> second half. I mean, it really was. No, it really was. Like, getting up, I think we went up 22 points at one point in the second half, and you just felt, especially under the 10-minute mark, it felt yeah. like this is done. This is done, and yeah. you want to get to that point in, in, in the game, and especially in that first-round game, I feel like, especially after, you know, since we played so late in the first round from mm. all the other games, seeing all, like, seeing the one seed lose, seeing Arizona lose, yeah. like, it was like... Even in fans' minds, it like it, it creeps in there. Like, this is not a gimme. Like, there and no. you know, I and I think I think a lot of that has to do with just how much more parity there is in NCAA now. Yeah. Um. So, it, but good to get out of the first round like that. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I think you know you hit it on the head. The parity is it's a true thing, and um, transfer portal NIL, yeah, all that stuff makes it easier to mm -hmm. compete. You know, you can you can piece together teams quicker. You can get guys that, you know, maybe had smaller roles at bigger schools or whatever, and then you can piece together like a you know a a, a team that's older and experienced. Um, that's kind of what Grand Canyon did, and a lot of these successful teams are doing that now. Um, so it's, it it is fascinating the parity in college basketball. I think it's great for the sport because now, like literally any first round game is live. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it used to be the 16, even the 15 twos weren't really, now I think there's been three, three in, in a, a row, yeah, three in a row. So it's like, you better be ready to go. Yeah. Um, and if you're a fan base, like understand, like obviously you don't want your team to lose, but you need to just like understand that, uh, you know, it's not, it's not just about covering, you know what I yeah. mean? It, <laughs> like it used to be in the first round. Like yeah. it, now it's, uh, you know, survive in advance, but that's a real, um, deal and like I said having no anxiety because there's no pressure on those you know high seed teams in that first round and you can just feel it even when you're watching the games not even in the arena when you watch the other games on TV you're like oh man like you saw Arizona get really tight against Princeton and then obviously the Purdue I didn't get to see the game they were showing that you know as it was going when the Grand Canyon game was and they showed the last five minutes you know in and out of um, our action on the big screen and like I I had to keep looking. I like, I didn't even want to call the game. I just wanted to watch the, you know, the end of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You could see Purdue. What it was fascinating just reading the game recap. I guess I think maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I don't know exactly the minutes, but I know Edie didn't like get a field goal attempt in like, like the last 10 minutes of that basketball game. It's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. He was getting, they were disrupting him yeah. majorly. And it was, yeah, it was. It, but yeah, but you it, still it, throw it to the yeah, best player exactly, in college yeah. basketball every time it, down yeah. and play off of him. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, and he has 21 and 15, and he doesn't get a field goal attempt at the end. And I don't know. Yeah. And it was, it was a true David Goliath deal. Mm -hmm. Did you see that stat where it was um, effective? Ken Palm has an effective height metric. And Purdue was number one, and Fairleigh Dickinson was 363 out of 363. Holy cow. Yeah, that, a, that is a crazy stat. That's a crazy stat. Yeah. So, like, you know, obviously height doesn't matter, and it does in certain areas. But it was just fascinating because, like, when we played up Purdue, obviously we couldn't do anything against just mm -hmm. his height. Like, and we, it's not like we didn't play, have a good plan or anything like that. Like, he just caught, turn left shoulder shot, right hand jump hooks all day. And you're like, well, I'm in front, or if I go – you know, chest front or whatever, like he's still getting the basketball. So I, when yeah. I saw that, I was like, wow, like that's a uh, crazy. You felt bad for that Purdue program too, because you know, that's, that's going to hang over your head for the rest of your career. Yeah. Unless you win a championship like, like Virginia did, but mm -hmm. that's good luck. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they, they, they had the ultimate redemption and won it the next year. Um, but like, that's, one of those that just hangs over your career for no, you know, just forever. Just, oh, you, you guys lost to Fairleigh Dickinson and they weren't even supposed to make the tournament technically, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, they you know they did lose their conference championship game, right? I did not know that. So, so. Mary, Mary Mac, remember we played Mary Mac two years ago uh -huh. at, at the Kennel? Um, 
they made the transition. There's a weird rule. Once you go to from Division Two to Division One, you have to wait three years for postseason tournaments. Huh. And so Mary Mac won the the whatever A Sun Championship. And so Fairleigh Dickinson technically was not supposed to be even like in the in the deal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then they win. So it was funny. That is funny. I- interesting. So anyway, we we obviously watched the Arizona State TCU game and and you know, obviously we know the outcome, but before the game started, for my eyeballs and, and kind of knowing college basketball and who's good, I thought Arizona State would have been a better matchup for us just in totality. Um, you know, I think they were, you know, long and athletic, but they weren't as big and strong athletically. And I think they played a little bit more loose that sometimes plays into our advantage. Not smart is the like basketball IQ, not smart is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So like take some bad shots or, you know, miss some easy rotations defensively. And, you know, and if you play really disciplined, that can help you win basketball games. So watching that game, obviously they played fantastic. I was you know, kind of rooting for Arizona State just from a, like, not the seeding, but I was like, this is just a better matchup yeah. for us, in, in my opinion. Um, and obviously it didn't go that way. And we knew TCU would be a good, solid, um, hard-nosed basketball team. Jamie Dixon's got them playing extremely hard. Another guy that's used the transfer portal to his, um, you know, to his benefit. He's got a, a bunch of 20... 21, 22, 23, 24 year olds running around there. Mm-hmm. I mean, the kid Chuck O'Bannon, you know, if, if people really want to go back in college basketball, Charles O'Bannon, the O'Bannon brothers at UCLA, they had a great run in the 90s. I remember growing up watching them. Anyway, he was a year below Zach Collins, and he's still in college basketball in high school. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. So, like, he has old guy. Like, Zach yeah. Collins is, what, is in a fourth year in the NBA or mm-hmm. third year in the NBA? So, like, yeah. Like Brian Michelson was just saying, like, you know, just we're talking at breakfast or whatever and team breakfast, and he's just like, oh, yeah, like, I watched Chuck because he's from Vegas. Like, I watched him in high school play against Zach Collins, and he was a year below him, and he's now we're playing again in 2023. That's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm just the point I'm trying to make is like everybody's using the transfer portal mm-hmm. and like there's a bunch of old guys and um, eventually it'll start tapering back down to more normalcy once the COVID year kind of leaves and then I think they're putting in a new um, what's the thing? Oh yeah, you get one free transfer and then the the second one you have to like sit out. So mm-hmm. it's just not because there's some guys that have been four you know four or five programs and it's like come on man like at some point. It's got to stop. It has to stop. It yeah. has to. Like, yeah. You kind of have to, like, and it's it's kind of a deal for young kids in life, too. Like, you can't just bounce around jobs, you know what I'm saying, right. without getting any continuity or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway, going into this game, um, I was probably 55, 45 confident that we'd win or, like, like just the matchup. I mean, yeah. obviously, our, our guys have played fantastic, but I'm like, well... This is another Big 12 team that's super athletic and, um, you know, guard really good. Not great offensively. I don't think they're as good as offensively as some of the other big, like the Texas and the, the Baylors that we've played. Mm-hmm. But also it was like they're going to, you know, down on side ball screens. They're going to switch mo- multiple actions. I was curious to see what they were going to do against Drew Timmy um, early. They went black defense, which is a double team from the bottom side because um, he likes to spin a lot, but a lot of teams do that as well. So take away middle, force some baseline, then you double from the bottom side. Um, what you get, up, what how you can counter that is obviously weak side cutting, and then you can hammer screen on the back side, um, and which we did, and I'll talk about in a bit. But, um, you know, they started the game um, extremely aggressive defensively. Like I said, we knew that going in and watching the film. They switched everything, which is – I've talked about it on my broadcast on the radio. I don't know if I've talked about it on um, this show. Is It's how lethal that can be if you do it at a high level. And I don't care if it's high school girls, boys, AU. If you can switch correctly, you take away so many different actions that teams run and, and you eliminate – um, potential mistakes or advantages other teams have, right? Especially against a shot clock. Mm. And they were really good at that at the start. Julian was not getting his wide pin down action. They were top siding all of his DHOs because obviously he had 28 the game before. He's been our second best scorer all season. Um, 
you know, and then with Drew, Drew started off great in that game, but they were double teaming from the bottom side and they were trying to push him out from deep touches. Um, and so they kind of got us in a lull um, early in the basketball game. At one point we were down 10 in that first half and, you know, it wasn't a, we can't do this, but it was like, we better figure out a way to get better touches and, um, credit to the staff and the players as well. Drew was starting to get lower angle touches and he was just starting to go up and finish mm-hmm. um, and make, uh, you know, simple plays to score. Um, so, you know, we get in that first half and, and again, um, we had a stretch there where we couldn't shoot the ball, couldn't make free throws. We were 12 for 33 in the first half whatever that 36 percent or something like that yeah two for 14 from three 14 percent and then seven of 13 um from the free throw line and then if you look up we're down five and i said on the broadcast like we could be down 12 to 15 really easily Mm -hmm. and so it was a silver lining thing it was like we've played as bad as we can as far as shooting the basketball rashir bolton was oh for five from three Mm -hmm. i think one for six overall um just nobody's can make a jump shot and we were getting pretty good looks because against you know a a nice uh team what i mean by ice is when you get side ball screen or dho's they send everything baseline so you top side it on ball okay and then you preload on the on the bottom side um and it forces you to take sometimes bad like 14 15 foot jump shots but then you have to get through your pressure releases and then on the back side if you run it right and run it quickly you can get open shots so um but you have to make them right <laughs> you know what i mean that sounds funny but it's like literally like hey you got to step up and and make these so they stop um, being successful that type of defense and then maybe they play a little bit more straight up and traditional you can do most of your actions um but we just didn't make shots but again like i said going down five at halftime playing that bad i was like you know what like there's no way we can play as bad as we did in the first half and the second maybe we could you know, anything's possible but i don't think we will mm-hmm. and so i was i felt good in that sense going into half times so like well you know down five and they probably were like shit we should have been down we should be up 12 you know their mm-hmm. coach staff was not going to say that out loud but like fuck you know we missed an opportunity you know like 12 for 33 and two for 14 and then you know missing six free throws that we did it's like we should be up 12 to 15 on gonzaga and then really can put the you know hammer down for him so going into that second half i was you know obviously looking forward to seeing how we came out and i think the play that really got everything started was rashir made a, a, a three early and got one to go down on a kick out um you know so it was like all right he's seen one gone in um he needed to be able to make shots because um the way that they're playing him defensively um you know and then i think it was about three plays later i talked about the black uh, defense you know the the double team from the bottom side blues from the top whites from a, a shooter so that's just how we terminology it's not always how people call it but that's just how black big to big blue big to big from the top whites off a um, shooter so anyway mm-hmm. when i keep referencing that that's the only way i know how to reference it. <laughs> it's just buried in my brain um he got that bottom side uh skip like i told you against if you hammer when a, a, a you know hammer screen on the weak side and he got a corner three so he makes two in a row and then a few plays later, we get a swing, swing, and Julian finally gets an open three in the corner. And we go up one um, early in the second half, probably in the 15 minute mark before the first media. So mm-hmm. then it was like, all right, we're starting to look like we're um, Gonzaga that we know and love and f- have played, you know, for the most part this whole season. Um, and, you know, I kind of, kind of the floodgates started open. We started moving the basketball better. We started sharing it. Um, we started, you know, scoring at a, a, a much bigger clip. And, um, yeah, I was, uh, you know, really impressed with how how much that provided energy for us. Obviously, Drew Timmy was rolling at that point. I think this is one of those better games he's ever had as a in the um, NCAA tournament. Did you see that stat? It was kind of crazy. Uh, it's eight 
20 point games it was nine and, or nine, nine, nine out yeah. of 11 um, it's fantastic if he gets one more he's i think he breaks the all time record oh yeah well, so, good for him yeah but yeah he uh you know ninth out of 11 ncaa tournament games he has over 20 points that's crazy it's yeah 28 on the night 12 of 21 i think the backbreaker play for them was the drew timmy step back three too because <laughs> obviously he was three for so at that point he was two for 22 on the on the season from three yeah it was the third three of the season of right? the season and then he goes <laughs> he bangs in like a step back three and a shot clock and there you can just like you know i just look at the bench real quick when a big play happens you know i just look at their bench and see this you know the the, the context of the game because I'm describing it without watching. Yeah. And they're just like, fuck, you know, you can just tell like, <laughs> shit, how does he make that? And, mm -hmm. you know, let him shoot that every single time, blah, blah, blah. Um, that play was huge. Um, you know, and, and like I said, I was just really impressed with how they, uh, you know, started to get out and run and, and defensively we looked better. I thought we did a good job on that miles kid, even though he had a, he had a fantastic game. He didn't, he had a, a dominant he had a game that was really efficient but it wasn't dominant and that was kind of the the con or the what we were trying to achieve i think defensively against him i thought you know we knew he was going to be really good he was you know preseason all big 12 player of the year didn't get it but he had some injuries but i think first team all league you know what i mean like mm -hmm. really good point guard he ends up going eight of eight of 13 two of four six of six from the free throw line 24 points which is great but he didn't control the pace of the game in the second half, if yeah. that makes sense. So, like, when he was getting his stuff, it was kind of here and there, here and there. It wasn't like he was, you know, completely breaking us down defensively, getting into the paint, making, you know, uh, passes to the outside. We did switch the coverage on him in the second half, if people noticed. We went to what we used, we were doing to Aiden Mahaney and, and Cam Shelton with a mm. long show until he got rid of it and a tag on the weak side which I think is is what you kind of have to do against, you know, really good point guards or guy anybody who's really good off screen and rolls and you have to live with swing, swing, corner three sometimes. It's just how it goes, you know what I mean? But you're taking the ball out of his hands and making him, uh, you know, give it up to somebody else. But I thought in that second half um, it was really fantastic to see our guys, you know, kind of get out and fly around and, and make – Big time plays. I thought Malachi Smith was fantastic in the second half. He goes four for six, three of four overall. There was a play we were up to with about, I'd like to say about 10 minutes to go. Um, they go on like a, we were up seven. They go on a little 5 0 run. Fuey's literally going timeout, timeout, timeout. And the ref doesn't see it. Mm. He runs right by him, doesn't see it. Malachi gets that walk up three where they weren't even talking to each other, like TCU. Yeah. Makes it. And then Fuey calls timeout right after that. Yeah. So, like, it was a huge break that, you know, I don't know if the television broadcast caught it. I, I talked about it on the radio, but it was just kind of like, oh, okay, the luck is going our way, right? Mm -hmm. We, we should have got a timeout. <laughs> we didn't get it. And then we make a three to go up five, and then we call timeout and slows their momentum back down, refocus defensively. Um, so my point was is by explaining that is it could go as shitty as you cannot possibly imagine in the first half. Nothing bouncing your way, shots not going in, looking actually really bad. Mm -hmm. And then you know once once the team mojo gets going in the second half. Um, it's just crazy how stuff like that shifts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we finally get something to bounce our way. And then, um, so yeah, it was kind of funny and it was it worked out, obviously. It's like a th six point swing, basically. Or it whatever. really did. Yeah. I, the, I, there was a moment where Miles, Miles hit a three and then he looked at, I think, the scores table. Mm -hmm. And, and you, I felt like, oh my gosh, this could, be the momentum shift like this guy has all the confidence in the world mm -hmm. and then receiver came down hit a jumper and we went to timeout and then like all the momentum that tc yeah. had for a second just went away well, i think it was it's, it's excellent coaching like coach yeah. Few managed that game the right way um but yeah i do remember that rashir hit a pull-up jumper and got fouled mm. makes it and then yeah. they call timeouts and then yeah slows their stuff down they're fuck why'd you foul a jump shooter you know what i mean yeah. but because yeah he made two threes in a row that were like deep contested yeah pretty good defense and you can tell he was starting to roll um but 
you know, I was just really proud with how we executed again, like a planning a team that downs everything, plays really physical, switches all your actions. You have to be, you have to be able to get through your pressure releases in your third and fourth um, progressions. Mm. Um, and you have to, those already have to be put in, you know, <laughs> like in November. And obviously the staff is, is fully aware of that, but that means, you know, they've worked on it and they understand it, that teams are going to do that. Um, so I was uh, really impressed with how well we played. I thought Drew Timmy was a um, legendary game. Like I said, he did a better job of just getting low and deeper post touches instead of waiting to catch, you know, outside higher up and allow them to double. Mm. Um, he got low angle touches and just went up and was simple and scored the basketball. So fantastic game man like it really looked bleak there for there for a second like i said that the positive that you had to take out of that first half was only being down five it could have turned any which way yeah. and uh so great win for this program h eight, eight straight sweet 16s which is bananas to think um and it always just uh, for anybody listening that has a friend that always says we don't win in the postseason like i don't get where that comes from <laughs> I mean, we've eight straight sweet eight, sixteen. Eight straight sweet sixteen. It's, it's it's crazy. It really yeah. is. Like it's not even just saying that because I've you know played there. It's like since twenty fifteen, we've won two games every year in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. It's crazy. We're so fucking spoiled. <laughs> well, it's like, you guys don't win. Like, what are you talking about? We don't win. Like, like how many programs would die right now to be in the sweet sixteen? And we've right. done eight straight years. Like getting through that first weekend mm. is crazy because then it's literally. It's not a crapshoot, but like anything can happen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and, and um, so a, a really cool, you know, deal for these guys to be a part of that. And apparently, Drew Timmy said the f word on national television. I didn't obviously see it. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, he was getting interviewed. I forget what he said exactly, but then uh, I all I know is when they went back to the studios, they said someone said Drew Timmy. Uh, colorful commentary as always. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, good for him, I guess. Whatever, man. You know, like it's part of his vernacular, and I think this is how he speaks. I yeah. don't think he did it maliciously. I don't think, but um, you know, I think along the lines, it was one of those where like we didn't want to be the effing team that did mm. it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Didn't make the Sweet Sixteen. Um, so yeah, it, it it's a pretty cool uh, deal to be a, uh, you know. Um, witness i guess mm -hmm. and a, a program that's, that's had that much success and get through and beat a big 12 team finally or whatever you know what i mean and yeah. feel good about that get that kind of off their plate and um you know get into a game with ucla it's going to be a fantastic uh, matchup we've played them twice two times in the last two years one was in that empire classic or whatever it was called last year that um uh, week-long tournament in vegas where we played central michigan mm -hmm. ucla beat him in the, that game pretty handily what was the score of that game where is that oh gonzaga yeah yeah uh we the gonzaga won that game 83 to 63 yeah that's uh, if i my my memory serves is yeah we played them pretty good uh kind of bothered them i think they were kind of banged up or yeah ju zang didn't play well, okay, yeah. So just re-looking at the stats, I think we just kind of uh, jumped on them early. They only shot 35%. You know, it's, it's almost like a totally different team last year that we had Nemhard and, yeah, Nemhard. You know, and Chet. You know what I mean? So, like, it's kind of hard to look back. Um, Caden Perry played in that game, looking at the stats. Yeah. Played seven minutes. He hasn't played a game this season for injury. So, yeah, it'll, uh, you know, obviously that'll – Take an effect, and then the year before was the Jalen Suggs, uh, you know, miracle at half court and overtime in the final four, the COVID final four. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so like, we've had some success, and then we played them in 2015 in the NCAA tournament and beat them to go to the lead eight in Houston, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've had some success against them recently. Um, you know, so uh, it's just always funny we find them, we find ourselves playing them now in the NCAA tournament or like in non conference. Um, so it's going to be a really good matchup. I mean, uh, excuse me, Vas Vas Vasquez is his name is I think Pac-12 player of the year. Fantastic, you know, four year player, kind of an in and out face up three that can post up, can score in the mid range, capable shooter from three. 
not like I mean quick, but just like a really good basketball player is best way to put it. And then the Tiger Campbell, the little point guard's fantastic, really quick and get inside, makes good decisions. And then they pride themselves on playing really good defense and playing really good half court offense. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what style prevails in that basketball game. Um, I'm trying to think who's the, Oh yeah. They're missing the, look, the Clark kid who, um, towards Achilles, I think in the, Pac-12 tournament, which is oh, uh, unfortunate. I think he was Pac-12 uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Wow. Um, so they are a little bit shorthanded. They had another kid roll his ankle in the end of that basketball game, but he was walking at the end of the game um, against uh, Northwestern. So uh, I'm, I assume he's fine. It could be adrenaline, but they're going to be shorthanded. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully they're at full strength. I like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, that's not one of the things you want to root for, but uh, they definitely are banged up. Is my point. Um, so it's going to be a fantastic game. It's cool that it's in Vegas. So you know, hopefully the fans will travel. Both both programs will have fans there. They travel pretty good uh, for UCLA, like for LA team, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they draw great for their home games, but I think they travel well, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it should be a, a fantastic, uh, you know, occasion again, I gotta, I gotta go through another week where I gotta talk about <laughs> fucking 20, 2006, <laughs> my AD came up he's like, dude, I'm, he just laughs. He's like, you guys got to do this all over again. So I'm like, and, and it's funny, like people probably don't even realize, like we played them last year. We played them in the Jalen Suggs, like one of the greatest final four buzzer beaters of all time. And yeah. we played them in 2015. Yeah. Like just a little reminder. Um, but it is, you know, it, it is what it is. Like it doesn't bother me anymore. And like, and obviously, you know, I'll be on, I'll probably do some radio shows and, or some national shows. I usually, you know, to do some interviews there. And, and um, so yeah, that part of it, it's, it's just, it's just funny, you know what I'm saying? In, in all reality. But again, these programs have, are, you know, light years from what, when that was, if that right. makes sense. Yeah. So, and they played each other and they kind of built the West Coast rivalry, I think, um, mm. because it used to be Arizona before Tommy got there. Obviously, Arizona's still great, but we'll never play them. Right. You know what I mean? Unless mm-hmm. we absolutely have to in a tournament, but right. we'll never schedule a, a series with them. It just doesn't make sense. I don't, I doubt that we ever will. You don't play your buddies. Yeah. Um, so like UCLA and probably Oregon was for a little bit, but UCLA is probably the program on the West coast. That's, you know, our rival and probably could compete against each other a lot of times in the recruiting and mm-hmm. um you know it's not just the 20 2006 game you know what i'm saying like it's <laughs> right you know what i mean like it's a legitimate program rivalry so uh looking forward to it it's going to be a fun chapter in that uh you know series and um i know they got a lot of um animosity towards us as far as a just a program because we beat the shit out of them last year mm-hmm. i mean when by 20 it was going away they were really frustrated um, they couldn't run anything offensively. And then the Jalen Suggs three was, you know, just one of the all-time greatest, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, final four threes. And that was, they were hitting lightning in the bottle that year. That's when they were the first four, I think. And remember they played them, <sighs> yeah. they were 11 seed, and then they played themselves all the way to the final four, beat Michigan in the lead eight mm-hmm. um, in the same arena. Which, it's when they did the big curtain and split. It was kind of like a state basketball tournament. <laughs> it was for COVID, it was the COVID the COVID one, yeah. I mean, the NCAA did a fantastic job just to get that thing through. Um, but I remember sitting there calling the game or getting ready to call our game and, you know, the other side just going crazy Michigan fans. And then I look up and then UCLA wins because we couldn't see, we didn't see the scoreboard. And I'm like, all right, well, here comes the, all the, you know, I got to answer all these questions again. You know what I mean? Like, here it comes. Yep. And then he hits that, uh, you know, Jalen makes that amazing three, but uh, it was actually cool. I saw you know, I played with Ryan Hollins in Charlotte and obviously he was on UCLA when that game happened and I seen him at the game. It has been years since I seen him. So it was cool to like just catch up with a guy that, you know, we're buddies with or whatever when we played and, you know, people think that you're supposed to be like still rivals from like college. Like nobody really gives a fuck about that when you get to the pros. Right. Unless you like had like Duke Carolina and you like actually beat the shit out of each other, like physically, but mm-hmm. like other than that, like nobody cares, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a chance for an all time classic. And then, you know, if we win, 
we are going to be playing a higher seed no matter what with Arkansas and UConn. UConn. And yeah. it's, it's fascinating to think that we might have a chance to run against Arkansas that yeah. we lost to last year. Mm-hmm. And they kind of kicked this. They kind of just, yeah, yeah. it was kind of like we were never in that game uh, last year. Um, so, yeah, they're getting hot at the right time, too. Like Musselman's just, a good coach. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, I don't. I don't necessarily have a, a good or bad comment about the, taking off his shirt all the time, but he can coach. <laughs> he can. He's been in the NBA. Yeah. He's, he's gotten programs. So, I mean, that's – I don't know people like to talk about that, but I don't I don't know. It, to me, it's – I'm just looking at what he does on the on the floor, I guess, besides yeah. that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's crazy that this team legitimately – obviously getting to this point, but this team that legitimately has a, a real shot to get to the Final Four and – even the people listening, and God bless you for listening, keep listening. A lot of y'all weren't going to be like, this team can make a Final Four run at the start of the year. That's the beauty of sports. It's the beauty of um, watching young players gel together and, and um, you know, just ascending and, and playing well at the right time. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we got to take care of business, but, I mean, it's a two-game series now, and we're on the West Coast. We don't have to worry about time difference. Yeah. We've played – We've played the, you know, in that building. We've mm-hmm. been, um, we've played this team, you know, in the last two years. So familiarity is going to be great as far as scouting, you know. Like, and it's not like they're going to change completely all their actions and stuff. So that's going to help. And then if let's say Arkansas wins, it's the same thing. It's like, hey, we played them last year, guys. Let's watch the film and see what we need to take care of. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a great ended up being a great draw. <laughs> It really for, did for us, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, and so I think that TCU game was the scariest one, obviously out of, one out of two, but I think that was the scariest matchup, and we obviously got through that, um, you know, and so I'm looking forward to it. We leave tomorrow. It's there was some talk to just to, to fly stri- uh, directly to Vegas, but Fuey wanted to come on, which I totally understand. Being in Vegas for too long, not even trying to be funny, is just not good. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you need to come home, but then also it's like got home at three. I was in my bed at three thirty last night, and then <laughs> obviously doing this was fine. And then leaving tomorrow, whatever time we leave tomorrow, so it's like um, come home to do laundry, and that's about it, and turn yeah. back around. That uh, that is a it's a lot of it's a lot of traveling. <laughs> yeah, it's all right though. But, I mean, we charter. Yeah. So I mean, uh, again, that's I don't like to be the guy that's. It was so hard. It's like, nah, I just called basketball games and drank beers on the road with my buddies, and <laughs> it's okay. I'm no, right. for sure. I, I, so I got to ask you a question about, so th- this last week, they mm-hmm. unveiled the AT&T commercial, mm-hmm. uh, and so about three weeks ago, you went down there and yeah. filmed in uh, LA. Like, I got to ask, like, what was, how did this come about? How did the whole AT&T commercial thing come about? So I, I got a call from the old agency that I, Pridey Sports, like I guess they still represent me, but they just send me stuff that people just go through them. Yeah. So like, I, I if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was when we were on our LA trip when it was Pepperdine LMU, and um, you know, one of their workers, the gal was like, "Hey, I got this really good opportunity for you. You should probably listen to this one." And so I listened to it, and I've been offered commercials in the past i did a fan duel one last year Mm -hmm. but i've been offered ones that were themed behind that yeah and i've i've turned down a couple in years past because i'm always like are you guys making fun of me are you just doing this like to to, just you know like what's the tenor of it yeah and the tenor was fine so Mm -hmm. i was like sure yeah Yeah. i'll do it um and so i flew down uh the day so i flew back from la and then flew right back down the next day which is fine you get that 7 a.m. direct mm-hmm. that uh yeah you know that one in alaska does i think from coming out of spokane mm-hmm. and uh so we did it on a public beach uh, the will rogers one so it's the one when you get on the pch going towards malibu um it was a huge production there was six when we had six trailers so i had my own trailer and stuff like that so it's kind of interesting to go through that yeah and makeup and all that stuff <laughs> They told me to bring my, they couldn't find like a, you know, Gonzaga Morrison jersey. And back then they didn't have the names on it. Right. So that jersey is literally my game worn jersey. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I still, (laughs) you know, obviously still have it in my closet. Um, So I did that. And my parts, I had 
me and Greg with a pickup thing that we did on the commercial, I probably did. We probably did nine or 10 takes. That was it. Uh -huh. It was great. And we did it like first thing in the morning. So it was like 830. It was nice out. It was like 55 degrees. Wasn't too cold. Sunshine. So that part was great. Um, hammered through ours. And then we had to do the, the, the shot at the end where, you know, everybody's singing or whatever. We did probably that at 430 at night. So I sat around literally for whatever six hours doing mm -hmm. absolutely nothing which was fine <laughs> yeah you know, you know like just walking around and and um i had to sing one shining moment like the last chorus in a booth it was kind of weird and it, like, <laughs> like you had to, like they had, to, they had to get your vocals for yeah, it yeah we had to sing it <laughs> me, and, me and greg Oden had to sit in a van and sing it um which was funny they're yeah. like we don't care what it sounds like we just need it for you know like the dub your voice if we can't hear it with yeah. the waves or whatever so did that and then so honestly, I was probably on set like in front of a camera for like two hours. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I did a fan duel one last year and I did, I was on set on camera for like six and I didn't say a word. I fist pumped like 80 times. <laughs> so this one was fantastic and like people were super nice. It was a huge production. There was like 80, um, um, what am I trying to say? Extras. Extras yeah. yeah. So like it was, it was huge. Yeah. And like, the, the gal that works for Pride Sports, you know, obviously she does this type of thing for, you know, NBA player. Like, it's a big agency. And she's like, this is the big, biggest production I've ever seen. Mm. Um, so it was really cool. And then there cool. were people really nice. I got to meet the, the you know, Greg Oden for the first time. Really nice dude. He's a coach at uh, Butler now with Thad Mata, who coached him at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. um, he's the Dobo, the director of ba uh, basketball operations. Obviously, I've never met Christian Leitner. Talked to him for... 15 20 minutes nice guy he's actually said he wants to move Mon to montana randomly <laughs> he's like i've been to missoula it's beautiful up there he's, he's like i'm tired of florida he's, he was talking about like his kids are almost done so he, like some people want to get out of that climate i get it that's what his basis was he's like i just want to get out of that climate yeah so i want to go to Kalispell, Mo missoula i'm like cool man like yeah. you, I, I was like do you know it's like fucking 10 degrees and you can't see for <laughs> two months like in spokane you know what i mean like he, i hope you know that um and then the Sabrina gal was uh, fantastic. Obviously, my daughter plays uh, mm. AU basketball, so I'm a fan of the girls' game, and she's like one of the um, up-and-coming like triple-double machine, and they yeah. just picked up Vandersloot and that uh, the other girl, what's her name, that played at oh. uh, UConn for the New York Liberty. So yeah. like they got a squad now, and I was just kind of picking her brain. I'm like, so you can play on the ball, off the ball? And she's like, oh, I finally get to play off the ball a little bit. Mm. And, Courtney's going to bring it up. I was like, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Got our autograph uh, for something, um, which was cool too. Um, extremely nice. Like, Everybody was cool, man. And so it worked out. And um, yeah, just yeah. Uh, I get a lot of texts from it and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah, it, it was, was easy, man. Yeah, it was. I, I Someone texted me about it on Thursday night and I was like, I was like, I didn't, obviously no one was going to come out. Obviously I thought it was going to be during March Madness. Mm -hmm. But it's just so funny, like this whole like, UCLA game it's just like that commercial's on now we're playing UCLA like it's just like a kind of a that's a weird it's a, how it, I know and I know it's like it's because it's a west and UCLA was number two in the west so mm -hmm. it makes sense but it's always so like I still think think that like NCAA like really loves this matchup they yeah. want to see this happen <laughs> it's a, well it gets a big number yeah and as far as TV and like I said in the last episode like remember this is an entertainment tournament yeah they do a good job it's like one of the only sporting events that there's really no com complaints like where you mm -hmm. really think but it, they they do matchups for TV. Yeah. it's made for TV. So like they that when they're looking at that, they go, okay, how much you know, an ad dollar, all that stuff yeah. matters. And Gonzaga, UCLA on the West Coast, like those are two of the biggest programs besides Arizona as far as like markets. Mm -hmm. The other, the only other one that would equate to it would be like whoever's in the Salt Lake market. You know, like Utah or BYU. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like as far as like mm -hmm. getting a, a a big number for college basketball. Mm -hmm. UCLA, obviously being in LA, anything in Southern California, but then, you know, Gonzaga was always a, a, you know, above average draw as far as television. Um, so yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be another good matchup. Hopefully we can prevail and then have a chance for elite eight, um, opportunity, but, uh, yeah, super excited about going down there and calling it. And, um, I think it, uh, this team has, is, is peaking at the right time, which, what's nice about this club is, like Julian plays fantastic first game, doesn't play great the second game. There's really no drop off, right? I yeah. mean, 
Malachi kind of picks up the slack there. Rashir plays really good in the second half against TCU. Obviously, mm-hmm. Drew does his thing. But, like, we have that ability to every, you know, there's not only like a core two, three guys that have to play good. They should play good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes it easier. Yeah. But there's other guys, like, you know, and it has happened all year that, you know, Ben Gregg's had a game where he's had 15, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then Hunter's had a game. And then Malachi's had more games where he can score 12, 13 off six shots. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it makes it, it makes this kind of really difficult matchup to, to cover and play against because, you know, who do you really scout for? Obviously, you scout for Drew mm-hmm. and Julian, but then we're still waiting for Nolan to have a big time game. He's had big time games, but you know what I'm saying? Like, he can have the ability to have a big time shooting game, um, you know, in the tournament. So really proud of this team, man. Like I said, eight straight sweet 16s is bananas to really think about. Yeah. Um, and people really need to take a step back and really think how special that is from a program, um, you know, with the resources that we have compared to other football schools. Mm. We're not, we're not, we're not, in the, you know, completely behind, but we're not, you know, Texas and yeah. all the, you know what I'm saying? Duke and blah, blah, blah. Like it's pretty special. It's a huge recruiting tool. Like to say that you've gone to the sweet Absolutely. 16 that many times, like everyone used to say like, cause like Tom Izzo used to be, he'd get to the final four, like every four years, like mm-hmm. you could say like your class will get to the, to the final, final four. four. Like, and now, I mean, easily we can say the guns I can say, if you come here, we're going to make yeah, a run you, in the yeah. tournament. You're going to play in big yeah. time television games with scouts, blah, blah, blah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you're going to play in um, the biggest games that you can ask for and, mm-hmm. and have a chance to, you know, up your stock, blah, blah, blah. Cause everybody that comes to <laughs> everybody thinks they're going to play in the NBA. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's part of the recruiting. It's just how it is. And mm-hmm. God bless them. Like you should have that mindset as a young player, but anyway, looking forward to it. Thanks for listening. Thank you to our sponsors for, uh, you know, helping us out all season. Again, we have uh, Drew Timmy episode on tap. We're probably waiting till the season's over to release that. I think it's just the right thing to do. It's, it's not. It's, there's nothing controversial. I think it's just. Yeah, well, I think we'll release some clips. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. Had, he he said some fun things in that commercial. We got some good clips from it, but uh, um, but I'm yeah. We should definitely wait. Until we'll just wait. Yeah, it'll yeah. be the end of the season. Be yeah. kind of a little treat for everybody. Absolutely. So that's you know we're not like editing it down or anything. It's just I think we should recap and then mm-hmm. put that out and then we'll do a you know a final one but uh, again thank you to our sponsors thanks for listening